when Penn went up to Bangkok before, she stayed in her son's apartment and on the balcony, they had this bird cage and Penn thought that he wasn't taking care of these birds properly. You know, like, like leaving them out on the balcony and I don't know. I, I don't know, what, what do you do to take care of birds? But whatever, so Penn was like, Right, I'm taking the birds, I'm going to take them back to, to here, to the farm. And apparently he was like, no, 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 I want them, my birds, you know. But she's like insisting, you're not having them, right? Because you're not taking care of them. Now I was like, like, do we have to? Can we not just like release them? Isn't that what people do over here? Like you get a bird, and you let it go for good luck and all that. So she tried to bring the birds back on the plane or the train or something, the plane, but they were like, no, you're not allowed to take birds on the plane. So I, this has been going on for like a month or something. I'm dreading like these birds showing up. <laughs> but I think they are showing up. I think they're getting delivered. And the neighbor came around yesterday because he does like the bit of metal work and, and they were discussing, I'm not involved, right, but if I'm not involved, it's like chaos, so. So they got to make a bird cage for these birds that are showing up at some point. They were gonna make it two meters by two meters. I don't know what this is. This is like a mock-up of it, though that's certainly not two meters by two meters. I'm trying to think to myself, like, okay, there's gonna be like these birds and there's gotta be like a cage for the birds. Like, where should it go? Where's the best place? Like, what's best for the birds? I'm thinking maybe I'll get the cat to eat the birds and we'll get the dogs to eat the cat. And then, and then I'll have peace and quiet finally. Anyway, I'm sure I'm rambling a little bit because it's, it's early. Back from their run. Gog is so excited to get back in the aircon. You should have seen him. He was running in circles at the thought of getting back in the house. Good Gorgi. He's proper excited. All right, calm down. So. I think he's got to have air con. There's. There's no way around it. He likes it too much. Oh, come on, I'm gonna go in. Oh no, he's got muddy paws. Come on, you got muddy feet. Good boy, up. Come on, muddy feet. So one thing I'm thinking about is I need to leave enough room to get the silicon gun up inside if I want to silicon up there, which I think I do. So I've determined the clearance I need so I can just about get a silicon gun. So I've marked like the minimum distance I can have the shower screen. And I'm gonna use this level to translate that mark like down onto the floor and, and mark the floor. So I've got that mark down the bottom of the wall, but I need that to come off the wall at 90 degrees. So I could use a square, but actually I want it to line up with the tails and I'm gonna assume, and they do look like perfectly square. So I'm gonna measure off the line on the tails. That makes sense. So we're eight centimeters. So X marks the spot. That's going to be the centre lines for the first clamp. So that first bracket's got in quite well. You can see it's pretty straight over the line I made. But I don't just want to trust the line up, so I'm using a straight edge and I want to make sure the next one is, you know, as perpendicular to the first one as possible. With a lot of jobs like, you know, hanging the mirror or something, you can, the screw holes can be off by a mil or two. It doesn't matter, no one's ever gonna notice. You know, for shelves or the towel rack or whatever, if it's, if it's slightly out, it's okay. 
But because the glass is so straight and so unforgiving, it doesn't want to bend, this is one thing you, you want to really do your best to just have everything lined up as, as perfect as you can. So this piece of glass is like, it's big and awkward and like, you probably can't even turn it round in there in, in the bathroom, it's just too difficult, it's too heavy. So we want to make sure when we're carrying it in, you know, I've got the, the correct corner in this hand ready to go down. So it's ready to go like right into the correct position. The floors are slightly sloped in here. So it all drains off to the corner. So they're not quite a right angle. So after a bit of faffing, we've got the glass into place in the correct orientation. And I just want to show you what I'm doing. So I'm doing something slightly different this time. So obviously these two in the bottom of the floor, they're already fixed in. I'm making sure that the glass is pushed fully to that side. So there's a gap there. So when those scrub screws are tightened down, it's fully seated onto the back on both of those. And then this time around, I've actually put on the clamps on the glass, so they're fully seated on the glass as well. So if I mark the back edges, then they're all going to be lined up on the, the back edges of the clamp. So when the glass was on the wall there, I marked either side of the bracket, and then I've got the centre and I've marked the new screw hole. So I'm going to do the next bracket. Okay, so I've now got three brackets fitted. The first wall bracket is done. So I'm going to put the glass back in now and mark where the next bracket goes take the glass out and do that bracket and put it back in and then mark the last bracket. If you try to do them all at once, there's more chance that you're gonna wander slightly. If you do them like one at a time like this, it takes a little bit longer, but it just lets you be more accurate, like checking as you go and you get a better result. Concrete plugs in the floor. Thermal bricks here, so I'm using the thermal brick plugs. I hope that's obvious to most people. They've been hammered down in there beyond the tiles. You can't quite see them, but they're down in there. You know, you don't want to just blindly use the plugs and screws that come with a product, you know, because they're almost always concrete plugs. These ones look okay, but sometimes they come with like really shitty cheap ones. And these screws aren't very long, so I'm not using these screws. I'm, I'm using like much longer ones. Okay, so that's all completed now. All went pretty smoothly. Everything's lined up nicely. So the glass is sitting right at the back of all the brackets. So next I've got to put this reinforcing bar across the top. I've got the pole cut roughly to length. It's a little bit too long at the moment, but it's just short enough so I can have all the fittings on and it's going to fit into the gap. Now, I've got these two sliding ones on as well, so everything's going to go in there okay. So I'm going to draw a pencil line around this so I can get the centre for the hole. That's not fixed yet, I've got to get a screw through the middle of it. Right, so I've got my two circles on the wall. So i just got to drill a hole straight through the middle of those. On this occasion I will be using the screws that came with these. They've got a nice flat bottom on, so they're going to get a good grip on that thing there in the wall. Difficult to be able to push hard enough up here like this. Come up one more step and look it over it. Okay, so those are both fitted on there, screwed in. So put those in with the grub screws facing up and unscrewed so they're out the way so we can get the pole in there without it hitting the end of that screw, that's important. Left this pole slightly too long at the moment, but you have to, you can't cut the right length until you've got these brackets both fitted. So what you've got to do to get the right length is you've got to get it into one side and fully seat it. So that's got to go right back as far as it can go, missing that grub screw. And then this one's got to go into this side, so you've got to cut it so it just clears the end of this bracket, so it can slide into one side and then back into the other side. Right, so I'm going to fully seat it on the other side, 
and then I can see where I've got to mark it so it can just, just about slip inside this one. I'm going to mark it with the drill bit, the diamond drill bit, so it's going to scratch the steel quite easily, I think. So, yeah, again, making sure it's fully seated into the other, other side. I'll get a scratch on there, so I know where to cut. Slide up and into place, so it's in both brackets, isn't it? But of course, if it can slide up and go in, there's also a chance it can slide out and come out, isn't there? So, so we're going to use the grub screws up there, but not to grip onto the pole, but rather to block the pole at the end. Does that make sense? I'm going to push the pole out, and then I'm going to put the grub screw down. So now it is in the way of the pole. So now when I slide the pole as far as I can that way, it doesn't go full depth into the receiver, it's hitting the grub screw. You heard it bang. So it's hitting the grub screw, but it doesn't fall out this side. And then the same on the other side. Does that make sense? So often, normally, grub screws bite down onto things, don't they? But in this situation, what you want to do is you want to put the grub screw down so the end of the pole's butting up against it. And that's what will prevent it being able to wiggle out and fall out. I suppose I would describe it as like finger tight on a screwdriver, like two fingers. Okay, well that was a hard few hours work, but that's all finished now. It's all in nice and solid. All that's left to do really is to silicon it in, but I'm going to wait because I want to do a bit more drilling. I've got to drill the shower head, towel rack and the, the sprayer thing down there. So once I've got all the dust out, the drilling's finished, then I'll come back and do the siliconing all down here. And I'll go all around these things as well so I know what I can get in where the screws are. It's about 3 or 4 p.m. now. I've had enough of that bathroom. I was going to try and carry on, but it's too tiring and I haven't really eaten all day, so i better come out and get something to eat. We've got to go out to town and do a bit of shopping anyway. Well, give them the meatballs. They like the meatballs. Pen got some fish for Bung Bung's dinner. And you. And me. Yeah. I don't know about that. So Doesn't want it. Doesn't like it. Bung Bung Bung, eat it. 7 Eleven meatballs. Oh Gorky, bite it! Bite! Right, off we go. Got some fish on the way up to town. Was it mackerel? Saba, yeah. Yeah, Saba, mackerel. So I left this all in a mess, but I'm thinking about if I come in, I've got four more holes left to do, so if I come in, and just do the holes for the towel rail, then all the drilling's done, I can get everything tidied up. So if I just do another half an hour of work. Right, it's 9 p.m. now. I've managed to get all the drilling done. So everything's pretty much done. The towel rail is on. The bum sprayer is on. And that's on as well, the shower head. So I've had a bit of a sweep out to get all the dust out. And then there's not much more left to do. I've got to fit the trap under the sink. 
That's not done yet. I'll do that over the next couple of days or so. And I've got to have one more wash of all the tiles and then like do the final siliconing, silicon and the silicon the shower screen. Everything's functional, shower, electric works, mirror electric works, and toilet's all functional. So I'll give you a quick rundown so you know how it works. So I think these B-Day seats, you can just buy the seat and you can just sit it on like whatever toilet you like. So I think they do probably fit better on Toto toilets. So they've got this like elongated section at the back there to accommodate this. And this one isn't like one of the most fancy ones. Some like they know when you walk up to the toilet and they automatically open and close and auto flush and lights inside them, all sorts of things. But this one, like it's got a sensor in the seat there. So it, it, when you sit on it, it knows you're sitting on it. So you sit and then it starts with deodorizer and it mists the bowl. So, you know, whatever goes in there is less likely to stick in there, if that makes sense. And the deodorizer runs for two minutes after you leave. And then for these functions, it's, as you can see, it's got a rear wash, soft rear, front wash for ladies and dryer. Um, you can adjust the water pressure and then also the temperature of the seat, the temperature of the water and the temperature of the dryer. The magic wand. And then the dryer function as well. Opens up that little vent there and it blows hot air out. I lived in like the halls of residence at university in Japan for one year and we had these toilets, or very similar ones. When I left Japan for England, the two things I really missed, like I was going back on the plane thinking, oh, this is terrible, was the food quality and these toilets. I was thinking, how am I gonna live without one of these? So having one of these has been like on my list of like, gotta have it for well, quite a long time now. It's been a long few days. Stop mucking around with them dogs. They're treating them like babies. They're supposed to be like vicious guard dogs. Oh look, there's loads of muffins as well. Good. The donuts will buy six, get nine free. That's a really funny deal. But look, there's loads of donuts in there. 15 donuts. I've been working hard today, so. I'm allowed it.